Welcome to another episode of Fistful of Metal. This is your host, Peter K, a.k.a. Trend Crusher. Uh, I hope everyone tuned in is doing well, especially in these crazy times and staying healthy. So on this episode, we're doing something new as always. Uh, I'm joined by Siddharth Ravindran, the vocalist of Pacifist. So I'd featured Pacifist back in August as part of Bombay Hardcore on the India as Fuck segment that we had in august as always it was a great chat with siddharth so let's dive straight in so welcome siddharth to uh, fistful of metal your second time on the show but i believe a third time on boxout.fm i don't think it's been the third no i uh, we did the august 15 uh uh, india's fuck edition that was the first ever i believe but then you did the one with roel back when you're oh wait, wait 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 of course hi I, I, <laughs> yes that was a live video in fact that that just went live unedited as is end to end with so, all our awkwardness in full view <laughs> yeah yeah so you know I, I i must say and i'm going to put this right up front uh, i've been following all your instagram posts on both on the spat, pacifist account as well as your account and i must right, say i'm right. quite jealous cuz and I'm sure most of the bands that actually follow you are band members. So <laughs> straight up, man, how does it feel? Are you feeling any like post-tour depression or hangover of sorts? I mean, yeah, obviously it's it was very emotionally heavy, overbearing for us. In fact, like the first show we played in Hyderabad was super emotional. I think uh, everyone got a little carried away like with how they were on stage and how we played those songs. And also because we were the last band, so it was like a huge build up to the end of the night and like it, just letting it out. So, yeah, I mean, during the tour, uh, post the tour, it was very, very, uh, I guess everyone was like in a very elevated sense of mind and like, you know, mood. And it was hard to come out of it for the first two weeks, I think. Yeah, I was like proper, like, <laughs> yeah, there was a strong uh, crash, uh, like three days into coming back and all. I mean, the whole post-depression, sorry, post-tour <laughs> depression thing is real. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, of course, uh, you, you're you just grateful that you got to do things wh- while th- things were still, like, situationally manageable, if, at least in certain parts, and, you know, uh, make the best of what uh, we could. Because, uh, yeah, and, then, and the fact that, you know, not a lot of bands got get the opportunity to do this also. True. Yeah, I still remember, I think it was, like, mid jan or early feb we were chatting and you were telling me that hey you know we're planning this and my first question to you is like when was the bombay date because i wanted to be there but uh, for those of you who are tuning in and have no idea uh, what the hell i'm talking to siddharth about well pacifist uh, one of the few bands who did an all india tour i think correct me if i'm wrong you had five dates planned and ended all up all india four. is like very <laughs> liberal <laughs> we did four dates out of which bombay got cancelled for obvious reasons and and we were the ones to call it early before you know things took an ugly turn or you know people run into pr- trouble with authorities and uh, and obviously with just social responsibility in general true so one show cancelled out of a five city tour yes that's yeah. i mean it. come on if you think about it like for a no complaints no complaints yeah, and especially if, like uh, comparing to you know what things were like years ago i mean you've been around uh, the scene and following bands for like a while, right? I mean, back then tour meant like playing gigs every weekend. Here you guys are like on the road, you know. Yes, we live in India where you take flights, no like buses and slumming it out that way. But uh, yeah. No, we did. We, we slummed it out. We slummed it out and we, we took every, you know, possibility we could to catch a train to the next city and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so that way, and it was mostly weekends. Uh, it actually was weekends because uh, all shows were situated between Fridays and Sundays. Okay. So okay. it's just that we just made merry in between because we were in a new part of the country and like you know that we'd never been to. So none of us had actually have ever been to the east. I mean, I have been to the northeast in a limited way when I've attended and worked on the last uh, NH7 sh- weekender in Shillong. But that was also like a very limited uh, experience for me. So this was like a much more, uh, you know, uh, you're in the city, in the rural areas even of uh, Bengal and stuff. So yeah, that was quite uh, refreshing for all of us. 
uh, and also i think our first ever outing like this actually no this would be technically our second uh, i missed out the north tour when we did with dead by fungi there was a small outing that happened in masuri back then uh, right. i had to rush back to bombay but uh, the rest of the gang was uh, yeah they had their first band vacation in that sense. <laughs> uh, yeah awesome and we so, were this close to actually having a small band vacation in goa as well <laughs> but that never materialized rana was behind us like you know do a show in goa Uh, okay. because that was the only state open relatively and was doing shows and you know he is like why not make a residency out of it uh, true but, true yeah, <laughs> some things could materialize down the line let's see <laughs> awesome awesome so yeah you guys were touring in support of the two singles that you released and uh, I must ask you at this time I mean last time when we spoke in August you mentioned that the singles were on their way now now that they're finally like on the internet right because there's no like cds and all of that in there uh, how does it feel i mean what's the feeling like i mean overall it's just been relief on all fronts to put music out to go out to play shows to be on stage to jam to see each other uh, just spend time uh, meet people all of this is like so overwhelming in so many ways um, so and also the response i mean it's it's beyond what we imagined like okay to be very frank i i honestly wished people really really appreciated the songs that that was always uh, you know in my heart i wanted this to uh, reach out and connect with a lot of people which it did and i'm glad that did the you know the music did its uh, what what it was meant to do and but yeah it feels great man i mean to just get a shout out from uh, one of the bands that you've looked up to uh, for so long who kind of laid your own foundations to understand and uh, you know uh, translate this style of music that we are playing uh, and when they give you a shout out like when he himself the vocalist of the band uh, pat pat flynn from have heart is literally calling out and mentioning the lyrics on reactionary and giving a shout out to grayscale dreams and telling american audiences what hardcore could be outside of their limited world view is so refreshing and so like i mean it just i it took took like a couple of days for that to sink in we were on tour when it happened in fact we were like literally in hyderabad hanging out with abbas post the gig and uh, you know uh, really exhausted after the first night where we went all out and like you know we had yeah. a couple of beers after the night and also and just like recuperating in the afternoon and that's when we realized what just happened but you know what before we uh, talk more about the music uh let's play uh the first single that you all released uh, against the tide floating away i forgot what it meant to feel like i was home a place i took to when sun with me all pilot stream swim so you won't sink to the edge with the Run dark and deep 
Hi, so that was Against the Tide and I'm joined by Siddharth, the vocalist of Passivist. So we're talking about the music. So I must uh, ask you at this point, Siddharth, you know, when we t- were talking about Grayscale Dreams, right, you talked about, you know, it being influenced by your move to Bombay, Mumbai, whatever you want to call it. And it was a whole kind of introspective part, right? Partially, it's not necessarily introspective. It was, uh, but it was observational to to a good extent. Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, at least now, from somebody who's been following the band for a while, uh, on against mm-hmm. the tide, there's a shift in focus, right? If I'm correct. Oh, uh, uh, there is, there is. So tell us about this shift. I mean, was this something that you know? Because if I remember well, against the tide was your uh, album launch gig, right? For Grayscale Team. So against the tide has been working. I mean, you've been working on against the tide. It's been for a out while. there, yeah. Yeah. It's been out there, it, working and also playing it for a quite a long time. So the thing is, uh, I guess <laughs> the thing with, with our music is that we've actually crafted and spent a lot of time on it. And I give full credit to the band for you know the and Apur for the process that like you know we kind of have. Uh, we've taken our time to like in the jam room with the songs that we wrote on Grayscale Dreams to sit perfect it. uh you know work those out and we already had like songs like against the tide and resolve pretty much in place in the current uh, iteration of the band like those were the new songs that we kind of were uh, testing out live for almost a year and a half uh, till the pandemic happened and it was always there you know the music uh, a lot of people recognize the track they remember it they remember motives from the songs they remember like the bits and pieces that you know stick with you at the end of the show and all of that um and yeah i mean like i said like i am sorry like you said uh, the album launch the t-shirt all of that kind of the word against the tide was connected to us for a long time even before the uh, song came out so i think that even that kind of had a sort of prescient quality to it i suppose like people could anticipate or expect something so that that, that felt good it took some time but i'm glad it did come out eventually yeah so i mean you know considering that you have been working on the songs or had been working on the songs for so long i just want to understand the recording process i mean was this something because i think this is the first time that uh, varun your drummer performed on uh, passive's material and also yes, you had yes, ashish yes. completely the guitarist he was be... contributing way more yeah i yeah. mean there is there are parts of ashish on double down in the ep but uh, which were uh, like dubbed in uh, like a little after like the initial recordings but this uh, these two singles i suppose yeah we actually put in a lot of effort almost <laughs> uh, a little du- double that of what we even put on the ep for that matter <laughs> uh, which was four songs so twice the effort on just two songs i mean it feels a little insane at the end of the day but i i mean it it actually brought us great results i think and uh, i mean obviously there were a few hiccups in the process due to uh, the pandemic and uh, you know a lot of things were unfinished technically when um, you know the pandemic struck because we did record these uh, like sometime in end of 2019 around the time we played like our uh, uh, magnetic field show and stuff so end 2019 is when we tracked drums with varun uh it was all live tracking so apur and ashish and utkarsh were all plugged in playing their parts jamming it with uh, uh varun uh, who also like obviously had a click or something for reference in the background but he the focus was for him to pay attention to the instruments and play alongside us and then we again read did all the guitars all the uh, you know bass and stuff in a more guitar oriented setup uh, so two two different recordings took place a uh, small tour in the south happened in the middle where we played hyderabad uh, chennai bangalore came back then we were supposed to complete things and that's exactly in that month is when uh, like march 2020 is when the pandemic struck fully and you know the lockdown came into effect and all of that and my vocals were left a few overdubs were left a lot of like a lot of the final few things were pending and uh, of which like it once again apur being like you know the producer that he is uh, and like you know uh, being very ingenious as well uh, because he's managed to do a lot of jugad in the past uh, with how we've recorded in our uh, older setup uh, when we had the fun house uh, where brishank used to host us uh, everything was like recorded on jugad then 
and i guess uh, apur has the necessary skill set to do that in when in the given condition as well so he he did a bunch of the uh, overdubs and like the leads and things like that uh, at home for against the tide uh, pretty cool and uh, even that like that solo that you hear at the end of against the tide it's quite it it literally did not exist until a month or so before it was recorded a month and a half or so it was played probably only at a few live shows when we did that south tour that's it uh, so all of that act, the song wasn't finished it was still at 90% until the recordings were completed so there were a bunch of things that got added in uh, which now you would hear live as well so yeah i mean then and the last thing that was left was my vocals which were uh, i was highly uh, what you got i was struggling with them because honestly we had done like two different takes at very rushed intervals between me doing like my job and running for like you know other things in between and like you know basically it didn't it didn't come out right it wasn't sounding right uh, i was too tired or i was going to off or whatever basically yeah, that's um, and then uh, I, like the final takes that were nailed were with varun uh, who kind of helped us engineer the whole uh, recording as well like the guitar recordings and stuff and uh, he also uh, helped me finish my vocals and you know uh, got those final takes which now i think sound like the, they're the best that i've ever sounded on record so i owe him that uh, and yeah that's that's kind of how the song was finally awesome. completed sometime in probably august 2020 Awesome. It All still right. took some time for us to reach release point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while. All right. Yeah. So at this point, let's hear the second single that you all re- released, and uh, this one's a personal favorite, actually. So uh, let's play the song and then talk about it. Here's Resolve. <laughs> Go! 
you know, I talked about, you know, that shift in at least lyrical content I could see in there. And I think it's more evident on Resolve than Against the Tide, if I'm right. So what kind of prompted that shift? I mean, you know, would you say that your music is kind of an expression of where you are at a certain time? So say, since you talked about Grayscale Dreams, right? About you moving kind of in right. Bombay, in there. How would you then describe right. both Against the Tide and Resolve? So I I guess Grayscale, like like once again, it's not like a personal anecdote thing necessarily. It, it is like a mix of observation and, uh, you know, experiences that you see around you. Uh, and it's not necessarily like very, very personal. Uh, uh, it it's a little bit more broad in that sense it's it's just like on about the condition that like the human condition i guess so i suppose uh, but uh, against the tide and resolve i guess as songs they also sound very different from the songs that we've written on grayscale dreams i i mean at least in my opinion uh, grayscale dreams is a little bit more stripped down and a little more um, a little bit more uh, hardcore uh, like you know very punk way i guess uh, like there are a lot True. of quick and fast riffs and uh, uh, simple uh, song structures and things like that. It's not uh, as grand as say how Against the Tide is, uh, you know, uh, how, how we've constructed that, uh, especially with the outro and the solo and things like that. Or um, how uh, even Resolve has such crazy shifts in terms of, um, you know, the, the pace of the song um, and also how it ends actually. It's quite heavy. It's It's kind of like, we took different things from what you would probably hear on Grayscale Dreams and combined it into just one song. Like it, it's as fast, True. it goes as fast and heavy as reactionary. It's got like the loud, loud soft dynamic of double down in a way. Uh, and and I think it's got a huge, um, in my opinion, it, it sounded a lot closer to uh, what I uh, like in say youth crew style hardcore music. So it, it kind of connects very strongly with that theme and that uh, idea. So that's what lyrically translated in my head with that song. So it, the themes that, uh, you know, we tackled in, with Resolve are more, uh, you know, commonplace in hardcore, talking about community, talking about having each other's backs and uh, prioritizing the individual, the self over like, you know, um, uh, a mob mentality or like herd mentality and, uh, you know, always sticking up for what's right and uh, calling out what's wrong and, you know, uh, those kind of basic ethics of like say being in a hardcore community you know that kind of a thing and which i think is like not something um, like i guess our audiences necessarily know hardcore music uh, like you know well enough to uh, attribute these factors and you know uh, uh, understand that these values are very strongly entrenched in like hardcore music and as a community so it was kind of like a call out to letting people know and kind of getting them into it as well uh, whereas against the tide is way more personal, like it's a little bit more emotional. It's it's it, it's got that sense of I guess uh, melancholy to it. So you know, I mean, there is a certain sense of melancholy in grayscale dreams as well, but that's like more more from a socio uh, you know political uh, view of the world. Whereas against the tide is like a little bit I guess more linked with probably uh, you know personal issues or mental health or looking inwards, like I you know like we mentioned in our uh, uh, description of the song as well so I, I how i see it is like these two releases are like a twin uh, you know uh, release that's uh, one one looks inward one looks outward one's right. personal and one is community oriented so that's it's a interesting bunch of songs that were written roughly around the same time and kind of speak about very different things and are still con connected by some um umbilical cord i suppose <laughs> like twin <laughs> brothers yeah but now, so what you're saying kind of makes sense also uh, why y'all had the visual for uh, Resolve. I mean, you had all the bands that you all toured with and played with and all. So that totally kind of links up with that. Which, you know, Absolutely, I wanna, that was the idea. Yeah, which kind of brings me back to what we started our conversation with about the tour. I mean, you talked about, you know, doing your band vacation and stuff like that. But if I have to like specifically ask you, Two highlights from the tour for you. Uh, number one, obviously, would be you know just the opportunity to play the music um, live, to put the music out, to meet all these people. That 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 is the biggest takeaway we've had from the tour. It's been our most satisfying tour out of like I guess 
you know uh, this is like our fourth attempt at planning a multi city uh, uh, string of gigs uh, if you know the mini tour as i would call it so that's been very rewarding i think this has been the best one that we have done so far uh, some of our best performances as well live i feel the second big takeaway i think would be just the interactions that we've had not just with people but also like pets and animals you know that's something that has oddly been like a thing uh, we've we've got we've been hosted by so many lovely people and we've gotten the chance to interact with them their pets and i think this is like a i mean i don't want to say it's a lock post lockdown thing or something like that you know but it is a uh, it's a it's a good thing to see that people want to you know just uh, Uh, enjoy the com- company of like uh, fellow animals and stuff and that's a very great stress buster huh? i mean like you like we were just discussing how stressful it is to just do your sound check and then just hang at the venue doing nothing or doing small talk with everyone over there until like you have to go on stage which is like a agonizing 6 hour sometimes away and yeah, just I to get a chance to go and chill with like someone's pet is like a welcome relief you know and uh, that was like i think a huge highlight we met so many pets and animals on the way it's incredible <laughs> but uh, yeah. since we're talking on tour uh, and you had quite a few uh, support acts in all the cities yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that you all performed uh, let's play some of their music so what which bands and which tracks would you like us to play i would like to give a shout out first and foremost to celestial teapot for being such excellent buddies and also uh, tour managers indirectly because uh, in uh, you know in a lot of ways ashwin the drummer from celestial has been uh, equal in equal parts a tour manager on this uh, entire run of shows and also uh, ronnie from where post rock dwells great great fellow uh, thorough and excellent work ethic it's been great just you know uh, being a team i suppose uh, so yeah i'd like to play something from celestial's uh, recent release um, this is a track of this called um, uh, deaf game a uh, great great song
right, so that was Celestial Teapot with Def Game. What else you got for us lined up, Siddharth? Sweet. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, so like a bunch of, uh, you know, acts that helped us along the way, uh, you know, also played alongside us. Some, some of them didn't get a chance to play alongside us, but they came up in support and, you know, they were there uh, with us throughout. Uh, special shout out mention to uh, Trash Talk. They fucking killed that Bangalore show. I wish, so I guess they are so natural in their element at their home ground. I wish to see them in that same uh, zone like and play more shows across India. They are such an eclectic and cool bunch of guys. Like I think uh, everyone like, you know, who's into like modern gent uh, or, you know, pro- uh, core music could probably pick a thing or two from them just to, you know, how to be fresh and sound original at the same time. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff. I'd like to play something from uh, their EP as well, Bird, which came out, unfortunately, in the peak of the lockdown in April 2020. And this was literally their first show that they got to play since then. So I understand how important this was for them as well. Wow. And I'm glad they were a part of the show. So yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy bunch of guys. Big shout out to Arshak. Such a professional and such a good vocalist. Um, yeah, we need more people like him in the seat for sure. Awesome. So which track do you want to play from them? Yeah, I think we should definitely uh, bump Secretary Bird of uh, their Bird EP. Uh, great, great song. Hilarious and fun. One of the most amazing birds of prey on earth. Its extraordinary feet are its unique feature. Armed with claws like scimitars, it uses its feet to hammer prey to death. This is the secretary bird. Snakes in the grass, the looking kick with the back of the head for the service, my pup.
Okay, so that was trash talk from Bangalore with Secretary Bird. You got <laughs> any more for us, Siddharth? Yeah, one band, another band I'd give, like, love to give a shout out to is Serpents of Pakhangba. Once again, to meet Vishal, to watch them in their element. Um, they just got a sh- shot at playing a show right before, once again, the pandemic struck at CAD, uh, Control Daily 12, which was a great performance, but I still feel like they have really really come together and they have got like an insane stage act and the costumes and the whole deal like and a great flow also to their set what a band please watch them in a club setting if you can they are phenomenal and uh, i would like to play uh, something of their uh, debut album uh, this track called head Hunters. please check it out
So that was Serpents of Pakwangba with Headhunters. And Vishal that Siddharth was talking about is Vishal J. Singh, a.k.a. a Mog Symphony. So, yeah, you can yes. expect some craziness from him. Absolutely. He's, he's a thorough genius and a lovely individual. It was great just to meet and interact. And uh, and he, he was really kind to us as well, like, you know, uh, with all the praise and help that he has given us. In fact, I think Fidel, the drummer from Serpents, filled in for Varun Sood because he could not make it to that sound check, owing due to the distance between Delhi and uh, Guwahati and the connecting flights. Uh, so, yeah, Fidel kind of filled in there, helped us out. Uh, so did Ashwin from Celestial. So, yeah, man, all these guys, they've been so solid and so helpful and understanding. They were, like, I really have to say, sometimes, you know, uh, it's this community of, like like I said, of musicians who kind of end up helping each other out more often than not. Like, helping out with, say, amps that are broken down. You've got to go hunt for a new one. It's it's like the guys from uh, Alien Sky Cult were, like, helping us out with that. Jishnu helped us out, the bassist in the band, with some great fucking photos. We've not had a great photo in forever. <laughs> like, we've been using the same thing for, like, almost two years now. Uh, so really, really, uh, you know, grateful to him as well. Um, yeah, man. I mean, also a great band uh, from Gohati. Uh, hopefully, we'll play a show together soon. Uh, the girls from Retromist came for our show. They were, once again, such sweethearts. They were constantly in the front row supporting us, pogoing throughout the set. Like, they they were like the hardcore people in the, in the you know, at that night uh, in the audience. They knew what we were playing. They knew what they were listening to. So, big, huge, huge shout out and lots of love to them. Uh, and yeah, all the best for their debut release. Whenever that happens, I'm I'm totally stoked for it. Yeah, you know, as, as somebody who's been following the Indian music or independent scene for a while, it's great to kind of see this community sort of form, right? I mean, uh, it started off with everyone being on, you know, websites like RSG and Gigpad, but now it's translated into something completely... Of, on its own, right? So, do you want to play one more track uh, for us, Siddharth? Absolutely. I think uh, another band we really want to, uh, you know, send a huge shout out to. Uh, although we didn't play Delhi and uh, there were a lot of people who were hoping that we would. Uh, it just didn't like work out, obviously, for like logistical reasons. But uh, when we do, we would love to play a show with Hoirong. Uh, and we have nothing but respect for those dudes because, uh, I mean, if there is like, Punk in India, those guys have been it. And they've been so much more than punk as well uh, in, in so many ways. But uh, yeah, their heart stays very, very much rooted in punk. So uh, great, great band, uh, amazing people, great musicians. And uh, they did a cover of, uh, Kamal from the band did a cover of Grayscale Dreams acoustic uh, for a small thing that he keeps doing on uh, you know their socials and stuff. Uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty neat. Gesture. That was pretty neat to... It sounded out. amazing. And yeah. they, once again, we were like very spellbound. We wake up one morning and we see this is out. <laughs> and it feels, it feels amazing to, you know, watch your heroes play your songs and appreciate it. So, yeah, we'd like to play this song called Bajrang Bali by Hoi Rock. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> crazy, crazy, guys. <laughs> All right.
All right, and that was Hoi Rong with Bajrang Bali. That was, if I'm not mistaken, their first release, which made a lot of noise back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they're actually severely underrated. I feel it's just like so. I think the people who know who know Hoi Rong really love them, and people who don't have no opinion about like they're like <laughs> who are these people? And yeah, I mean like it's it's. I hope more people check them out and you know discover. Yeah. definitely that that's what we're trying to do out here but uh, th- thanks that it's been great uh, chatting with you and i'm glad we can do this even though like you know went to separate cities but hey uh, doing this over zoom still helps but before you go i'm going to bug you just the same way i did the last time so mm-hmm. what's next for passivist i mean you'll finally got those uh, singles uh, released yeah yeah uh if i recall well the last time you had mentioned that you're working on an album or you're, at least that's the plan so how's the progress mm-hmm. on that and what can we expect from you all in the ne- coming months right right so i guess um, uh that is a work in progress it will take time it will take uh, i mean we we do have a lot of great ideas we debuted like two new songs that are more or less kind of sort of finished at least like in a live performance sense if not like a produced for studio sense uh but there are more songs that we want to write uh, which we have ideas for riffs things in like you know we got notes uh stuff like that so a full length is obviously the natural course that we want to take because we really do want to put a serious serious release out uh we have been getting a lot of uh, support like from uh, not just like from india but from uh, internationally as well a lot of people are now eager to you know uh, see like a see like i said a serious release out because an lp stands on its own right like that that is a it is like a milestone in that sense so we want to do that we want to put it out we want more people to discover our music uh, want the music to go to more places and i think that will be that progressive step uh, towards we want to play to more people who are into hardcore in the communities you know, be it in asia in europe or america or even australia for that matter i mean and or even the even south america i mean that's a very very far off distant land but uh, yeah. yeah we're just open to it we we want to we are we're hungry for it we want to make it happen so those are like obviously the things that we aspire to and want to grow towards so that is the goal i mean we will get to it eventually uh, the, the awesome. pandemic's not particularly helping but we're trying to figure it out as we all operate like you said from our own cities and uh, occasionally make time to meet up and get things done so yeah that's that's how things are slowly but surely proceeding all right so for everyone who's still listening in uh, how do they keep track of uh, pacifist uh, just drop in your social links i mean definitely i'm going to add them in the show notes but here's your time to use for promotion Absolutely. So please follow us on Instagram. That's the only place where I guess anything matters anymore. Uh, please follow us on YouTube. I mean, yeah, the subscribe, subscribe to us because uh, we might uh, keep putting out more uh, videos and stuff. I do sit on a lot of content in general. Like there's a tons of like unreleased, uh, you know, live uh, full songs that we want to put out. So yeah, I'll probably keep doing that from time to time on our YouTube. and yeah just uh, support us on bandcamp uh, we should be putting merch out very soon uh, yeah sooner than you think so yeah hopefully very soon so yeah that should be it awesome Th- thank thanks a lot sudat and uh, hey thank you so much peter for having us so that's the end of this episode as always you can reach out to me at trendcrusher@gmail.com or just search for trendcrusher on facebook or instagram and hit me up with your new music singles albums eps i don't discriminate so until next time stay safe and stay healthy cheers